Hello, welcome to Presume Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 68 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about a real-time example where we can use application state variables. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 65, 66 and 67 of this video series. Now application state variables are global and all sessions have access to them. So these variables can be used to track the number of users online. You might have seen many applications where you know when you log in they show a message showing you know stating number of users online at this time is so many. You know, uh, let's see how to exactly do the same thing using application state variables. Okay, let's flip to Visual Studio. Now the first thing that we have to know is you know, whenever a new session starts, in the sense, whenever a new user logs into our application or connects to our, to our application, we have to detect that. And how do we detect that? In global.asax file, we have application level events. And then among those events, you know, we have something called session underscore start. So this is the event handler for session start. Whenever a new user connects to your application, a new session ID is assigned to that user. So that's when the session start event is fired and we have the event handler here. So this event handler can be used to tap into that event. So every time this event happens, we increase the number of users online by one. Okay, and then similarly, whenever the session expires, you know, we have session underscore end event. This gets fired. Okay, the user session can end for two reasons. One, they might have logged out. Or number two, you know, basically they have, uh, their session has expired. They might be inactive for the session timeout. We know that we have, we can specify the timeout for the session in web.config file. The default is 20 minutes. So when this time is reached and, you know, the, if the user is inactive for that duration, the session will be automatically timed out. So that's when a session can end. And when the session ends, this event is going to be fired. And in this event handler, we'll decrement uh, the number of users online by one. And application, we are going to use application state variables. So obviously, every session can modify those variables. Okay, and then you can use that application variable in any of the web forms within your application. Let's say, for example, whenever you know web, web form one loads, I want to retrieve, find out how many uh, users are online. I can just retrieve that variable value from application state. Okay, so let's see how to do that. So let's go to global.asx. Within global.asx, the first thing I have to do is I have to initialize the application state variable. So where do I do that? We can do that in application start event. So when does this application start event gets fired? Now, if your application is not already running, obviously your applications will not have uh, any users. So when the first request comes, you know, that's when the application's assembly will be loaded into the memory, you know, and then the application starts up. That's when the application start event is fired. So when the application starts up, I want to create an application level variable so application and I'm going to call this users online okay and I'm going to initialize that to zero okay so this will be executed only once the first time your application starts and this variable is going to stay in the web server memory until the worker process restarts the process that's hosting the application restarts okay now whenever a session starts I want to increment this value by one Okay, and to do that, you can simply increment that value by one. So application of users online is equal to applications of users online plus one. But then application uh, of users online, you can store anything into an application variable. So when you try to retrieve you know, a value out of it, it's going to return that as an object. We need to convert that to an integer. We know that application of users online will have an integer in that, a number in that. So it's safe to typecast that to integer. Okay. But then the important thing to keep in mind here is you have to synchronize, you know, thread access because ASP.NET web applications work in a multi-threaded environment, which means, you know, multiple threads can try to modify this variable at a given point of time. So we want to ensure only one thread can change this value at any point of time and how do we do that application level uh, application object uh, you know exposes a method called lock so when when i when a thread calls this method on that object then only one thread can enter this piece of code here 
and modify this variable. If there are multiple requests coming in at the same time, you know, this method is going to ensure that only one thread can enter, change this value, and then once that thread calls the unlock method, that's when, you know, another thread can get inside and change the value there. So to synchronize thread access, make sure we call application.lock and application.unlock. In between the code, you know, goes where only one thread can modify that piece of code. Okay. And along the same lines, let's copy that. And whenever the session ends, okay, we want to decrement the value by one. So application.lock users online is equal to int of users online and I'm going to decrement that by one. That's it. We are done. So every time a user connects, this piece of code gets executed. So that in that gets incremented by one and whenever it is decrement, whenever the session ends, it gets decremented by one. And now I can retrieve this variable anywhere within my application. Let's say, for example, when webform1.aspx loads, I want to, you know, display a message. Let's say response.write number of users online is equal to and then we can say application of users online and I can convert that to string that's it okay now let's go ahead and run this so when I first run this application underscore start events get fired um, in which case you know the application of users online that variable will be initialized to zero and then the session start event gets fired value increment by one and in web form we are trying to retrieve that value and display it so that's one now if i copy that open another browser window and paste that here now look at this it still says number of users online is equal to one and this is a different browser window you know no matter how many browser windows you open here what's going to happen is um, since the browser the multiple browser instances share the session id we have the session cookie so the session cookie is now shared by these browser windows and the same session id is sent to the server so the server thinks okay it's a, it's part of the same session that's why it's not incrementing the value by one okay so just to make the web server think we are coming from uh, a different session what we basically can do is in web.config file let's set the cookie less mode to true so we are telling it to use cookie less sessions so we can change the session id in the url okay so let me go ahead and run this once again so when the page loads now you should see that you know the number of you online users uh, cookie less is equal to true so we have an error there let's set it properly so in web.config file it should be true okay let's run that now so we set the cookie less attribute to true so we get that session id there okay now if i copy the url as it is open another browser window and then paste that see that's the same session id so i'm not changing that now i hit enter it says number of users online is equal to one but then what i'm going to do i'm going to open another browser window and i'm going to paste that but this time i'm going to delete that session id Okay, so if you look at that, I just have localhost, the name of the project, and then web form one. When the request goes to the server, it, it sees the URL. Okay, there is no session ID in the URL, which means it thinks that this request is coming from another user, and it's going to assign a session ID. So session start event will be fired, and then the session value will be incremented. So when I press this, look at that. Number of users online is two, because there is another session ID. So now if I refresh this, since the application state variable is modified by this user you know now that is going to get incremented by two and the same is the case with this window okay now if i open another window let's copy this and let's change the session id once again so number of users online is three showing two here but if you refresh that that should become three and same is the case with the other windows because application state variables are shared by all sessions you know they're going to reflect that change okay so we can use application state variables basically to track the number of users online okay so let's refresh that and it should change that as well 
number of users online. Now, we haven't seen how the value gets decremented. Basically, for that, the session should end. If you look at in web.config, currently the session timeout is 20 minutes, which is the default one. But if, if you are following along with me to experience the session timeout event, what you can do is basically set this to two or three minutes, fire up the browser, multiple browsers like this, and then, you know, if maybe this browser is inactive for that timeout value, the session and event will be fired. At that point, the application of online users will be decremented by one. You can see that value going up and down depending on whether new sessions are established or if the existing sessions have expired. So basically, we can use application state variables um, you know, to, to track the number of users online. So every time a new user connects to your application, we want to increase the number of users by online uh, by one along the same lines when a new when a whenever a se user session ends, then we need to decrease the number of users online by one. And we have seen how to do that. We have made use of session underscore start and session underscore end events. And by default, the browser instances shade the session cookie to have a new session ID assigned when a new browser instance requests the web form. Set cookie less is equal to true for the session state element in web.config. And we have seen how to do that. And then change the session ID in the URL so that the web server thinks the request is coming from a different user and a new session ID gets assigned in that process. The session start event is fired so that the value gets incremented by one. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.